Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of Tech Reviews and Help and today we are doing another Android tutorial. In this one, we are going to get into how to make an HTTP GET request with the OK HTTP. And one thing I want to tell you is with this, you will need to have the developer forecast IO API uh, register for that and do whatever. But basically what you want to do is have this particular link right here. So what we're going to do is simply copy that. And I'll also recommend that you go ahead and have Motion pulled up so you can have that ready because it does take a while to do that. Now go to your main activity and if you have all that other junk on there with the action bars and stuff like that, you can take that off if you want and you just need this to start out with. And this is what it should look like. So right here, this is the API key. And you can actually get to the point where the uh, person himself, they can put in their own API key. So what we're doing is saying a string and um, we're defining it here, but you can actually go about and, um, and, and basically have it where the user himself can put in their own API key and that way each person gets, or each API key gets like a thousand requests. So that way they don't have to worry about if you want to actually make this a legitimate application. Otherwise you gotta pay and some stupid amount. And obviously with these, you want to be able to change that. And this is the reason why I, um, I, I, I added it to its own thing. Now, as far as the original link, so we got the API key the latitude and the longitude and what we have here and i just got this um, easier for you to see is we broke down and took out all of this and made that into that so basically what we say what we're saying here and if you've seen my uh previous video uh, not android but m one of my direct previous videos on math and coding and it will get into this um so whatever plus whatever plus whatever well basically what you have here is it's adding this onto this section so it's going to look like that and then you add that slash beyond that and so on and so on and that will give you the full link so it's as if i copy and paste the entire thing again we're going to try to see if we can give it ability to switch that out to uh, the, the latitude and longitude later because it's not it's not going to be good if um the thing can't figure out where you are and it's also not going to be good if uh, it's stuck at one exact location and it's hard coded in so that's a big thing to keep in mind. Um, and, and of course, if I wanted to have it like this, I can't, but it's just much, much easier for me to read it when it's broken out like this. Oh, and uh, before I forget the thing right here, um, if you got these below, it you'll run to some errors because w again, with code, it loads the first line first, then goes down, so on, so on, so on. So here, if you have these below this, the string forecast, well, what's going to happen is, is you're telling it, hey, add API key, latitude, and longitude into here, but it didn't load it, so it doesn't know about it yet. And that's going to run into a problem. So that's something to keep in mind in itself. So real quick, uh, next thing you need to do, and it's um, kind of useful, is go to the following. And what you want to do is, um, whenever you, you use a dependency, you should look at the actual recipes, if possible, and understand the difference between the synchronous and asynchronous. Now, we're going to deal with synchronous right now just to get things working. 
Um, next video, I'm going to talk about why you need to go with asynchronous, but again, just to get things working, we're going to do it. Um, one thing you can do is just copy and paste the stuff into the code. Uh, and, and I'll do that in a second, but going into here, it's actually pretty neat because you told the, pulling this up, the uh, stuff to to compile with that. You can actually go ahead and, and if you notice, like you would put like, okay, H, see here, it should be client. So it actually pulls that up because we, uh, we told it to grab data from that and then compile the stuff into the code so when we build it it's good to go so anyway so so this is what it will look like at the end and keep in mind again this is not what you want to see because we're doing synchronous and we need to do asynchronous in the next video i'll get into the difference so with this um basically what you're looking and by, and by the way if you want to use simple copy and paste that's fine uh you, you got to modify this quite a bit but if in fact if i wanted to i can easily do something like this and as you see here it works just fine But anyways, what um what we're doing is we're basically trying to build a thing and to get it to look at the stuff for logs. It's just trying to log the thing to see if it works, so we can see that we built it right or not. Now again, with this being synchronous, it's not going to work correctly. And in two videos, I'm going to show you how to build it in an asynchronous fashion. But it's good to know uh, asynchronous, just in case if you have to do this for whatever reason. Now, the error that would cause if you actually did try to run it, it will be a network on main thread exception. And this is, is basically saying that it's a synchronous issue. But keep in mind, this actually allows you to see how to make a basic request on the web. So that's a huge step into getting information. So if you're trying to make something like on Facebook or whatever it may be, well, this is a big step towards that direction. But anyways, as far as that goes, the next video, again, we'll get into the asynchronous and, and the difference and uh, overall. But if you do have any questions or anything else, then let me know in the comment section below. And also, please leave a like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great day.